Hey guys, welcome back. This is my full-length, uncut, uncircumcised video by request of one of my Patreons. So if you'd like to see this video on how to do pop-outs from start to finish, this is it right here. Very, very minimal cut, so please give me a thumbs up for it because this video took, woo, something like seven or eight hours to render and, uh, well, a very, very long time to cut. So <laughs> thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it. And um, stick around. If you don't like it, of course, just fast forward through it, but please don't give me a thummy down. Give me a thumbs up. I mean, it was a lot of work. I appreciate it. Hey, welcome back to Duckman Cycles and VW Garage. I'm your host, the Duckman. <laughs> Behind me here, we have my 1956 Beetle, also known as Eleanor. And you may remember we were working on those pop-outs. I built those custom pop-outs out of some temporary plexiglass. That way I had a little something to, uh, to work with that I wasn't going to break or scratch or, you know, mess up otherwise. The results right here behind me. And I am quite impressed with that myself. I think it worked out quite well, very, very well. And one of the first things that I noticed about it too is that that rear window shrunk up a ton. A lot of people were saying to me in the past over the last two years since this car was shown in the car show that that back window was done too big, that I made a mistake or you know that I failed or s somehow screwed up. But look at it now. Look at how much the size of it's been reduced by that uh, trim. Can you really imagine that the duck man didn't know what he was talking about? <laughs> anyway, I'm going to be smug. Yeah, I have to. I made that. It worked out. It looks fantastic. I need to do the other side. And I think I'm going to do a very, very quick time lapse and push right through it. So as always, like, comment, subscribe, and pull that dangle, Willie. That way you get updates every time that I upload a new video. Don't forget to check out DuckShit.net, my website, which has all of my different social media links. That's right. If you'd like to mail me something for the mail call video, you'll also find my address up there. That's right. I post my PO Box address for you guys to mail to. So if you want to send me something weird, do it. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get to work. Thanks for watching. All right, I got to get working on the driver's side now, or the left side, to those of you that are in a uh, right-hand drive country. <laughs> and I've got this wonderful piece of plexiglass. Look at the beautiful patina on it. Geez, I wish this was a bigger piece so that way I could do my windshield like that. Wouldn't it be nice to drive with that? <laughs> you know, maybe I'll just cut the oval that way too. Just, it's so beautiful. Yeah, anyway. I need to make another template, and that is that same sand rail windshield that I mentioned before. So what you're looking at right there is what we're going to cut into pieces. Now I'm going to throw that up on the car, I'm going to do a quick sharpie outline on this thing, and then um, do a basic cut, and then lay it against the window and draw some more lines and make a few more cuts. That's the goal is to get this thing working out, and then we'll see where we go from there today.
All right, I think this one is gonna fit real nicely. It should be an exact fit to inside of here. Yeah, it is. In fact, it's just a little snug over there. I could push it into the corner. So it's almost watertight. <laughs> Not literally, but you guys get the point. Now, if you remember from the last video, the measurements that I had to take off of it was an eighth of an inch all the way around. And an eighth of an inch happens to be the exact thickness of the marker tip. So I'm just going to run a marker tip all the way around. And then back on the belt sander it goes until the marker has completely disappeared. And uh, once that's good, then I take it back inside and we start making a frame for them. It's getting dark, but we've got us a piece of plexi, which is one eighth of an inch shorter the whole way around. And that's what it needed to be to get that metal frame and the rubber seal on there properly because of the measurement that we took off of the white beetle. And since we're using the same materials to build the frame for this one, same measurements apply. Anyway, we're gonna go inside and finish framing this sucker up. And it uh, looks good to me. All right, well, I'm freshly showered and we're inside this evening. So we're going to take this wonderful piece of glass that we just finished making and try to get it fitted into the stock beetle frame and get that resized accordingly. And you remember these uh, pieces are, well, the new glass piece is much smaller than the frame in which it comes out of. So we're going to get working on that over here. Now, you probably notice that I'm here in my indoor workshop, but the camera is much further away from me than it normally is. Because when I was doing the passenger side one, I kept coming over here and I kept kicking the thing. I kept hitting it with my elbow. Every time that I moved one of the clamps over, it was like it was whacking into the camera. But now it's, it's far enough away that I don't think we're going to have any problems. So I'm going to try to shoot this thing from start to finish. And uh, we'll see how that goes. I've already started out with uh, <laughs> a nice whiskey and coke. Not rum today. Actually sucking some whiskey. And uh, it's, it's good. It's a... Uh, mm -hmm. Peach pecan with ginger Pepsi. I don't know if that was going to be a weird combination. Probably just too much stuff in it. But it's actually um, not bad at all. Not bad at all. The very first sip, you taste the ginger. And then after that, you get the peaches. And then on the way down, it's the pecans. Interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and get started here. First things first, let's pull this rubber seal off of here. Shit, that came off real easy. <laughs> that sucker is... Uh, Pretty dry rotted, yep. All right, we gotta get them screws out of here. Let's see. These are all Phillips heads. When I was doing the other side, I tried to remove these with um, a drill, a power drill, with a screw bit in it, you know, screw gun, and uh, all I did was chew the heads up into things. 
and it was very, very not good. So with just this little screwdriver here, these things are coming out pretty well. All right, and there's our hinge off. Got all of our screws right here. I'm going to move them off to the side where we're not going to lose any of them. All right, now the trick is we got to get this thing split. Let's see if I can show you that up close. Here we go. This one's moving a whole lot easier than the other side did. The other side um, didn't want to come off at all. This one's actually budging. That's what I was looking for. Let's put the knife in here a little bit and just twist. There we go. It doesn't matter if I mar the ends on these a little bit because I'm actually going to cut them off anyway. So really doesn't matter. Needs a little bit more in here. Alright, going for the ratchet handle. Which will get me a little more leverage on it <laughs> than where I was at. Alright, it's coming now. Alright, you got one side off. Going for the other one. Yeah. Uh. Come on now. <clears throat> this side is budging, but man, it just does not want to go anymore. Okay, that one's a little jammed up. This is what I did on the other one, is I put a screwdriver in here between the glass and the metal and gently pried. Okay, there it comes. All right, we're gonna go around this way. Back this camera back up. Go. Pull this frame back off of here. Trying to be careful not to uh, straighten the frame out too much or put kinks in it. See, that's a kink. That's a mistake. I did not want to do that. Now it's bent in the wrong direction. So I'll have to straighten that out later. It's exactly what I didn't want to do when I just did it. Just as I was saying. Alright, glass is out. This one has a, um, a much more solid rubber surround on it. That's interesting. The first one only had like a piece of it, or maybe it was just completely disintegrated, but I don't remember seeing that much rubber. Well, glass is going away. Bye-bye, glass. Okay. Take all that rubber crap and throw it in the trash. The trash pile going over there. Yeah, I did not mean to open it up this wide. <laughs> all right, look down on that channel, see if we got any gobs or blobs or any kind of crap that's in there that needs to come out see if we could straighten this a little bit great now i kinked it the other direction stop kinking it duck man you're so kinky oh my god all right let's try dropping this in here 
see where we're at. Okay, very obviously starting here, this has to go further away. Double thumb duck stretch. Does a pretty good job of spreading out these 90 degree corners. Okay, we got it. Well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, it's still not quite in the way it needs to be. This is where the clamps come into play. And this is where the frustration comes into play too. This is why I was getting pissed that the camera was over here. Because it just kept hitting me while I was trying to work on this. You just, humanly, I don't have enough arms to do this effectively. Not bad. Right here in the middle, I'm seeing a hoopty. All right, time for blue cup. <laughs> not quite in all the way this this opening needs to go a little bit more outwards what happened is as I tried to put this together here everything moved yeah if you remember on the last one I mentioned that I got real lucky that when I spread the wings open here in front of the glass that it bent and it, it formed the exactly right angle for that piece of plexi that was going into it. Yeah, there's still a gap in here, so this is not in all the way. All right, pop it all, pop it, pop it. Put that here, yep, I can see it. And stretch it out a little bit more. Thing all kinds of messed up now. Got kinks where I don't want kinks. <laughs> the bends are forming in places where they're not supposed to be. Okay. And my phone's going crazy. All right, that looks better. There it is. Now it's in there. Hell yeah, okay. Now, just like the one on the other side, Right here in the bottom, 
just has to go up just a little bit right here. So that's actually the shape of the body. The way that body was stamped out. And that caused it to close back up again. So let's stretch that back up a little bit more. Okay. Put this back in here. All right, that looks good. It's actually not falling apart now anymore either because it actually fits. Yes, okay. All right, I don't like the way this is, uh, got a little more bend here than the other side does. I don't think I need that much for the body. But when I clamp this down, that might come out. Yeah, most of it came out. It's still a little bend here more than what I want, but we can work on that. All right. Now what I did to start forming this bend, I didn't just pull it down because you can't. I actually pulled it straight back. And just like a rope, I found that it would... Ooh, let me move my beverage. I'm going to spill that out. I'll be crying the blues worse than if I screwed this up if I spill out my drink. <laughs> just pull it straight back. It will close that up. And as you can see, it's already starting to close up in that corner. Hey, getting closer and closer. Just keep pulling it straight down. Oops, put a bend in it. A lateral bend. <laughs> you don't want it to go like this. <laughs> it needs to be straight. <laughs> okay. Now clamps are starting to get in the way. Let me remove this one. I think that's the one I'm bottoming out on. Little by little, it's coming out. Okay, now this is in the way. It'll get to a certain point where it's not gonna go anymore. And then what I will do at that point is I will remove the glass and I'll start stretching it. Um, or start bending it rather without the glass in it at all and it should form the rest of the bend and then I can just kind of adjust it so that way it works out for the, um, the piece. I think we're just about to that point. Okay. I need is my marker, and of course I don't see it here. But what I do have is I have a piece of tape. I'm gonna put a mark where I need it to bend to. Right about there is where it needs to um, make that pivot, that turn. Pull the plexi back out here. Taking care not to bend this side because it needs to bend over here. Need to now close this. I think it still needs to go greater than that. And then just start to open it back up again. Start looking at our piece of plexi in here. getting there. 
All right, it's getting tighter and tighter. This is the, the hardest bend on this thing. But it's coming out, it's turning out. I gotta keep pulling down on this. Some people suggested ratchet straps. The problem with ratchet strap is you got the um, strap itself and you got the hooks and all the other nonsense. And wrapping it around this, I think it'll mar up the metal. But just forming it with my hands seems to be working best. I mean, you see that gap is getting smaller and smaller. I just keep working at it little by little. Yep, it's getting there. This is the hardest bend. I mean, it really, truly it is. And I pull that back out again. Now what I need to do is I need to find an object to bend this around. Let's see what I got around here. This is not something I did earlier. All right, we're looking pretty close now. Yep, open this back up. What I did was I hooked it over my bookshelf that's behind me <laughs> and pulled it and stretched it. And actually that worked out better than I think anything that I did the other day. All right, it looks like I, uh, I messed that up. <laughs> Or did I? Well, I don't know. Let's see. Over here, there's a bend where there shouldn't be. This should be straight. Now let's look at it. Yeah, it's closing it up. Yep, it's closing it up. That gap is getting a lot smaller. But that, <laughs> that really is the hardest bend on this. Okay. Got to keep pulling it around that glass because that turn right in here is not great enough. So I got to keep pulling. I was going to turn this into a time lapse video, but um, you guys might be getting a better video out of this by watching me do it this way. I might time lapse some of it. In fact, you know what I need right now? I need a sip. <laughs> oh. A little dehydrated from working outside. I was a nasty sweat ball. It was hard to imagine it was actually only 73 degrees out uh, today while I was outside. And, and uh, for Florida, that's just this time of year, middle of summer. <laughs> unheard of absolutely unheard of it was warmer earlier in the day but it cooled down gradually and we had a breeze come out of the north which is why the air cooled down but the humidity was way up so it was still a little sticky but i mean with a fan on it wasn't all that bad <laughs> okay i think i need to put a clamp back on here because this bottom keeps trying to open up Here we go, getting closer. Ugh. I might have to pull the uh, glass back out of it again, but I mean, it's almost there. <clears throat> I'm out of leverage. Yeah, that's it. It's not pulling anymore. Okay. Pull the glass back out. 
see if we can bend this a little bit more by hand here. Now we don't want to bend this curve because I think up to this piece of tape actually everything is good. But this side needs more. <clears throat> Let's see, did that get it? No. I think I messed it up again. Okay. Frustration is setting in again. It's not nearly as bad as it was the other day though when I was just practically tripping over myself and the camera. I was just very unhappy with the way everything was uh, functioning. Even though I got it, I mean all the bends worked just fine on it, but it took a lot longer than what I'm demonstrating here tonight. Okay, the glass just slid in the frame. That's interesting. I haven't seen that happen before. Oh yeah, gap has almost completely disappeared at this point. All right, we're gonna keep working at it. This is also where I um, gently tapped it with a body hammer when I was off camera. This thing is all starting to slide apart again. Okay, I'm gonna put another clamp on this because the sloppiness has set in here. It's all kinds of wonky because nothing has straight edges. Okay, zipper time. <laughs> I don't believe 25 minutes has already passed. Huh. All right, well, since I'm repeating myself so much, I think from here out, we're going for the time lapse. <laughs> GoPro.
All right, I think we're uh, we're just about there. I have to fine tune it a little bit because it's a little lumpy up through here. I, I didn't do what I did on the other one. I yeah, I made a mess out of this one. <laughs> I think I tried to hurry things because after doing the first one, I thought I was an expert. The other one was actually two days in the making. Uh, actually, you know what? I think it was three days of bending it. This one I chose to do it in about uh, at about 45 minutes of time tweaking this thing back and forth, and I'm not absolutely satisfied with it. I mean, while everything is clamped together and it does look like it's pretty good, it's just, it's, um, it's just lumpy. Yeah, I'm just not, not happy with it. So I gotta sort that out a little bit. Uh, it's gonna take removing the glass and just fine-tuning some of the pieces a little bit. You can see right here, this bends down. It needs to bend straight. That doesn't need to be that way. Right here, there's a high spot. Right here, there's a high spot. So what I'll do is I'll pop the plexiglass back out of the flame, flame frame, <laughs> flame and uh bend it out a little bit right here there's also a high spot and here there's a high spot so those these spots all need to be tweaked out a little bit and it's not hard to do it's just one of those things that just takes a little more time to do it but anyway i think this is coming along pretty well i think uh i think i'm going to stop and take a break try to have me something to eat and uh we'll see if i come back to it today if i don't well we'll just record and resume the video tomorrow but still, this is going to be a one video thing where I get this whole thing fitted to this car and be done with it all at once. But before I commit to this, the bends on this, like the last bend over here, anymore, um, I want to press it against the side of the car and make sure that it's going to fit in the opening. Because if it's wrong, I need to know now before I commit to everything and start cutting this and screwing in screws and making holes. And I, I don't know if I need to shave down the plexi a little bit. Probably don't. I didn't have to on the other side. But you guys get the drift. So anyways, um, yep, taking a pause for the cause. Oh, and if you saw me run the marker along here, uh, around this curve, the reason why I did that is because then when I popped the glass back out, I could see just what the depth is, how far the glass was going up into the metal. And when I pulled it back off, I discovered that right here, it actually wasn't going in that deep. So I tweaked it a bit, and now it's going in deeper than it had been. So that's why the, the black mark is actually further into there than it was before. It was a lot of tweaking to make that happen. Well, anyway, I think we got it. I'm just going to pop this off of here. So I can get a better look at it myself. I think I can release this one, too. This is going to be a little tricky to get that out of here. No, actually, that was quite easy. And then this one's got to stay. Yeah, this one's got to stay because this one is actually holding it together. But I think this one can come off. Yeah, that one can come off. All right, we got one clamp that's actually effectively holding this all together. I think this came out pretty well. Pretty well. It needs some adjustments, but pretty well. Yeah, and the marker is hiding up in the corner the way I wanted it to. There's kind of a flat spot here, too. This should be more of a, of a curve. And it ended up kind of flat on top. So I'll pop the glass back out and just bend it a little bit more and tweak that a little bit. I just don't like the way that turned out. Just it doesn't look natural. That's just a real shitty bend. There's like a bend here and a bend here and a flat spot. That just looks stupid. So I'll play with that a bit. But yep. That's it for now. Well, we're back. And in the middle of the night last night, I, I was lying there awake. I just couldn't sleep. So I got up and I had this brainstorm about how I could fix this flat spot that was over here and how I did it was I stood up my body hammer like this and I stretched the frame over the hammer and just pressed down on it and that formed the curve that I needed. So there's no longer a flat spot over here. It now has a proper curve and it actually looks really good. So this piece is um, about ready to uh, take out to the uh, beetle and test out to see how it fits. Now you probably can't hear it or maybe you can. My actual Wi-Fi microphone, I accidentally left it on last night, uh, so I have to use the built-in microphone on the camera right now, which kind of aggravates the shit out of me, but, you know, I just gotta live with it. It's uh, thundering really, really badly outside, and the rain is looking like it's going that way and away from us, according to all the different weather maps, including the forecast, which shows there's no rain. Now, I need to get this done, so that means Eleanor has to come out of the garage or at least get her out far enough where I can go ahead and squeeze this window in there and see what it looks like. We're going to take that chance, and uh, let's step outside. And hopefully the rain doesn't piss me off. But no matter what... There's the thunder. But no matter what happens, you're going to get a good thunder video. So we'll be back when we get outside. 
All right, there we are, back outside in this thunderstorm that's going on out here. Uh, obviously, it's not raining here because the storm appears to be going that way. And actually, there's a lot less thunder and lightning than there was just a few minutes ago. But you're going to hear it while we'll be sizing things up out here anyway. I wish I had the proper mic. You'd hear me a whole lot better, but this is just going to have to do. Here's our window. This is the one we've been working on. And this is the side it's going to go in. What we got here? Oops. Actually, this looks pretty good. The part I was most concerned about was this curve over here. Let me pull the camera in so you guys can see. Now, the same with what was going on on the opposite side. We wanted this contour to fit, and whatever difference there is, the rubber seal will, of course, take up. And there's roughly, eh, roughly eighth of an inch the whole way around. It's a little bit wider over here, just a tad. But once again, the rubber seal will obscure all that. You'll never see it. So this is good. Let's pull the clamp over here and see what happens. I know this thing is going to open up, of course, but I'll probably squeeze it into place a little bit better. Ah, oh, yeah. Ah, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. Okay, right here in the bottom, off to this side, right here in the bottom, just like on the other side, the body has an upward curve in the stamping. So what I do need to do is make sure that this piece of metal here bends up just a hair. And I'll take a measurement of the one on the other side since that one fits perfectly and put that bend in here just the same. I might have to take a piece of plexi out and just shave it off a little bit. Stuff that only takes a couple seconds to make an adjustment. And that lightning's going to be loud. Wait for it. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Well, no, maybe it doesn't, but it sure was bright. There it is. Not as loud as I expected it to be. Uh, you get it anyway. <laughs> All right, well, that's where we're at. Let's go ahead and uh, start making some final adjustments to this thing. Tweak out this bottom corner that's on here that needs a little adjustment. Top corner looks good. Back corner looks good. That's where we need to play. Shouldn't be too big of a deal. Let's see, looking at the piece of plexi. Yeah, I don't really have that curve in there. I mean, there's a little bit, but not as much as what it needs. So we'll file that down just a little bit more. Back in just a minute. Hey, very quickly, I just sanded the bottom of the plexi over here. And then I bent, bent the, uh, the frame just a little bit upwards into it. And now I have enough clearance that this should all fit around and get the rubber seal in there without any problem. All right, I feel very confident about that. So the last thing that's left then is getting this cut off and getting this corner bent. And then we gotta drill our holes where the hinge is attached to. I'm feeling a couple of raindrops, but I still believe that this storm is going to blow over. We're not going to see much of it over here anyway. <laughs> While it continues to boom. All right, let me go ahead and get the cutting, make some adjustments here. I want to get these done today. Here it goes. All right, let's see what we got here. You probably remember the method that I used on the opposite side. And that was instead of mounting the hinge here, because this is how it would go for the stock window, I gotta take the hinge and mount it backwards. And what that's going to do is give me a template for the two new holes that need to go in here. So here's the screws and the washers that go onto that. Let's go ahead and get this thing mounted in reverse. Okay, now I know exactly where my holes need to be drilled at. Right in there and there. So I'll take this out to the drill press. We don't need this to be in here. We'll run a couple of holes into it. And then we'll chamfer the edge. I think that's the right word. So that way they're nicely beveled like that. I don't even know if that's the correct term for it. I am not a machinist, but I can drill holes. 
<laughs> Drilled a lot of holes in my lifetime. <laughs> All right. Let's go ahead and step outside to the drill press and get these holes started. This hinge seems much more f durable and stiffer than the, uh, the one that was on the other side. I wonder if they're even from the same car. They might be mismatched. The other one was all beat up, too. It was all bent and twisted. and It just seems like it's a, it's a better quality piece of metal. But anyway, not going to worry too much about that. Let's go ahead and get some drilling done. The first thing I'd like to start by saying, the forecast was wrong. It's raining out there right now and uh, pretty strong. So I just pulled Eleanor in just enough into the garage that she's not going to get sprayed by the rain. But still that I have enough work area in here and I can actually push this chassis out of my way a little bit more, which gives me access to my toolbox, among other things. See the chassis give me this big free area. So that'll work. Can open up the back door too to get some air through here. Okay, to drill a hole into something like this and not go too deep, you gotta get your drill bit, which of course is going to be a little bit smaller than the threads that are in there because we're gonna put our own threads in it. Put it down to the bottom of that hole. And take yourself a piece of masking tape. And when it's in the bottom of that hole, wrap your tape around it. And this will let you know exactly when you've drilled in deep enough. So pretty much you just drill until the, uh, the tape hits the uh, alloy. In that case, you're done drilling. Okay, let's go ahead and get this set up. Man, that rain's coming down even harder now. Anyway, I had that one piss me off a little bit. I ended up breaking off a drill bit and I broke off a tap. It was just a f***ing miserable time. So I ended up, once again, shutting the camera off and getting it the hell out of my way and got the job done. So these two screws are now tapped in. You can see where the old two holes were. Those are aligned with that. Now we're going to run a cut right up through the middle here. And this stuff is weird. It uh, doesn't like to be cut very much. Um, Probably a hacksaw would be the best way to do it, but I can't seem to find my hacksaw, just like everything else in this fucking garage. As soon as Eleanor gets out of here and gets to paint, uh, I'm going to tear this whole garage apart and reorganize everything. And that means a lot of the stuff is probably going to go in the trash. <laughs> now anyway, we're going to cut the sucker right in half here. I'm going to mark it with a piece of tape. We'll get it cut, and uh, at that point, then we'll finish forming this corner over here. All right, there we go. We've got that very, very nicely cut off. And at this point, I can actually remove that tape. I use my uh, angle grinder with a cutting disc. And then I put it against the sander to clean it up and square it off. It's still not absolutely perfect. It's going to need a little more work. But uh, it's almost there. I didn't want to take too much more off of it because as I join these two pieces together, uh, I might have to you know, cut this slightly at a different angle because pieces won't necessarily mesh up flat. So always leave a little extra meat whenever you're doing some kind of cut like that. Okay, we're gonna go inside and we're gonna try to form this bend around that piece of glass. Okay, well we're back inside here. Let's try to get this final bend formed on here. So we'll take this glass, plexiglass, Slip it into the frame. There it is. Put a clamp on it. Which is fighting me the whole way around once again. I can't wait for this to be done. I'm not going to hurry it. I'm going to mess it up, but I do want it to be done very, very soon. <laughs> Okay, make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Our curvature here looks fine. Our bottom looks nice and flat and square. All right, let's start bending the top. Now the first thing that I did the last time was attempted to straighten the 90 degree bend that's in here. It 
why I did that was because if I left it open, it would have hit right here as you try to bend it around. Alright, here it goes. It also helps to give you leverage because you got something to grab. <laughs> okay. What I think I need to do is take the plexi out of the frame, and this is what I did last time, I remember now. Take the plexi out of the frame on one side, just like that, and then clamp this back down, so that way when I bend this, the two pieces don't conflict, and that this piece can lay flat over here until I get it cut off. Well, I got a little ahead of myself again, and I really should have recorded this, but I heated this up with a with a propane torch, and I was gentle with it. I mean, I heated it, heated it, heated it, and it transfers heat through it, you know, conducts it very, very quickly. My hand was way over here, and it started to burn, and it got my thumb. Uh, you don't see an obvious burn, but... Yeah, it's, it's probably a second degree underneath the surface. But yeah, this stuff, it, it conducts heat very, very quickly. Yeah, I had the glass out of it, heated it up, and you notice that uh, bend that was out of here, the former 90 degree, I straightened it out. I put it in a vise once I had it hot, and just delicately you know, bent it back and forth. I had it wrapped in a towel so it didn't kink it up too bad or crush it, you know, leave any marred edges on it. Uh, I did fuck it up a little over here, but it doesn't matter because it's going to get cut right there. So what happened over here wasn't a big deal. This is the end I clamped it on. Over here was the end that I bent it from, and I got it going pretty good. And man, does my thumb hurt. But uh, I started to bend out this corner, and uh, let's see if we can finish wrapping this one up here. I'm going to try to do it on camera. I don't think it's going to make me too pissed off anymore because most of the hard stuff is now done. But now that I've said that, you know how it goes. <laughs> let's pull this out of here. And let's continue wrapping this around that edge. need to do is I need to clamp this into place. Just like that. And then pull this right around the corner. Alright, we're almost there. At this point, um, I'm going to pop the glass back out, bend it just a little bit more. And then put the glass back in and see what she looks like. And I, I think I got it. This is where the glass gets tricky to get out of here because... <laughs> the contours and shapes now trap the glass. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just keep bending this right here. And that will approximate where I need to cut it off at. Right about there. Before I do any of that, let's see how accurate that is by laying the glass on top of it. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. I think we are pretty good. Let's put the glass back in. Hopefully the last time before I make this final cut. This stuff is getting harder and harder to assemble because the frame is getting tighter and tighter. Okay. 
something doesn't seem right. I don't know what it is, but something just doesn't look right. Might be fine when I clamp it together, but just looking at things here, it just it doesn't look right to me. Something just looks a little bit off. Yeah, it looks good. It looks good. Good and tight in that frame. And that's approximately where my cutoff mark is going to be. All right, let me go ahead and get a piece of tape on that. Get a cut, and then we'll get this last bend bent into place. And then a little bit of sanding on the ends, drill two more holes, tap them. Put the hinges on and it's ready to mount. I gotta check the time because tonight's Taco Tuesday. And what that means is I'm probably gonna be going out with Wild Bill tonight to go eat some tacos. And we usually do that in just a little while, so I'm probably gonna have to start gathering stuff up and packing things away. But anyway, we'll uh we'll find out exactly what time it is and uh, we'll get as much done as we can. Alright, okay, down to the home stretch. We've got that filed off. They are a little longer than they need to be because they're interfering with each other when I try to close it up. They are too tight. But that's okay. That's quite all right. Let's go ahead and take our giant clamp, the one that uh, reaches almost all the way across this. I discovered that if you get the glass up inside of here, you gain some extra distance between the clamps. And because the rubber pushes up inside of there, it gives it a nice cushy spot to pinch. Oh, I don't know why I didn't notice that before, but it's a lot better for clamping this thing closed when I use it that way. It's not such a hard clamp, it's a much more soft setup. Okay, let's see if that'll reach to there. Using the prescribed method. <laughs> yeah, it actually does. This will help me to pull that into place now. Okay. Why has my clamp not... Uh oh. Okay. I need to make an adjustment on the clamp. Okay. Let us try that. Alright, as I said, they're a little too long. Now that everything is tight, I can't get that to close up. Well, that's not a problem. What I'll do is I'll just uh, take this back apart, sand it down a little bit until they both fit. It's probably not off, but by a couple millimeters. It's, uh, it's almost there. It's almost got it. Yep, this is very doable. Alright, let's get this thing finished up. We're almost there. good here and here it is that gap doesn't look too bad at all let's go ahead and clamp it shut and see if the glass is loose in it if the glass is loose then obviously it's not closing properly or if it tries to uh, force itself out of its place no actually I think it's good 
a little out of alignment, but that's because of uh, just how I clamped it down. Yeah, it's straightening out right now. There, you go. there it is. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I could probably just coax the bend a little bit more in here, too. Oh, that little bit made all the difference in the world in here. I like that. Yep. Although I don't like this bend here. You see how it looks like it goes back down and then up? I'll have to fix that. And in fixing that, I think what's going to happen is this is going to get a little bit longer, so I'm going to have to shave a little bit off of that piece, too. But anyway, um, there it is. Damn near got it finished. Just about got it finished. But we're going to wrap up right now, and we're going to go to dinner, and we'll get it finished when we get back home. All right, well, we're back. We've got everything cut off, and once the clamp is on it, it'll close it back up. I still need to finish drilling the holes on the other side here so that way I can put the hinge on. And the hinge is, of course, what holds this shut. But before I do any of that, we need to put it up here in the car and see how well it's going to fit. Now, currently, it's uh, all spring-loaded, and it's not supposed to be. But, uh, yeah, there it is. That's not a bad fit. It looks like it's a little wobbly around the edges, but once you put the rubber seal in, you don't see any of that. The um, thing is really tight here in the front and the back, but down below the glass here, between the metal frame, I can see it's popping out. So this is open much more than it needs to be, but this gap is very small. When I was putting the clamp on here, right at the corners and squeezing it, this was bending downwards, which meant to me that these two pieces are too long. And when they come in contact with each other, it's causing it to give way down here. So I have to shave this down a little bit to solve that problem. And that's not a big deal. But overall, in general, it's, uh, it's got its shape. I need to fix a kind of a wonky bend that's in here. That's easy stuff. It has more to do with this gap here. And uh, once that's set, we'll try squeezing it back in here again and go. But otherwise, it looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm quite pleased. <laughs> Pull that back out. Let's get the grinding away on this. All right, you see these marks that I made here? I put the frame on it and I traced it with the marker. And you notice this is pretty consistent the whole way around. That's a nice tight wrap. But over here it's not. It's actually sitting kind of loose on this corner. So what that tells me is that this bottom needs to be shaved down a little bit more. So that way this can be bent a little further up. Because if you can tell, this is straight edged and then right about here it starts to turn this way and the metal is not following that turn because when it's getting closed it's displacing it pushing it out all right well, we're going to cut a little more off of that and then continue to uh, put this together but we're almost there All right, let's see how that did. No, well, looking at that, it actually took more slack out of this corner than it did out of this one. Now, well, that's because it kinked it again here at the bottom. Which tells me it's still a little bit too long here. I'm probably gonna have to hit it on the grinder one more time. Just sand down the end of it just a little bit more. But we're almost there. Definitely almost there. But a lot of that line disappeared and only a little bit of this one. I'll try moving that clamp over a little bit more this way. See if that makes any difference at all. Now, 
and yeah it keeps putting a kink down in here so yeah it's still just a little bit too long but almost there almost there it's fitting a whole lot better now and I suspect that if I put this in the uh, in the window hole it'll fit better too in fact you know what let's try it we'll put the clamp closer to the middle Well, it looks like you can't clamp it in the middle. <laughs> All the tension relief happens at the end. All right. Well, I'll make a few more adjustments on this. Looks like it's going to be minor stuff. Let's see if we can get this situated the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, I can feel it that when I squeeze it, the metal hits first before it hits the glass. All right. Here it is, closed up. This over here has a nice turn inwards as it's supposed to have, just a gradual one. And then over here on this side, there's supposed to be a little bend here, and you can see it, and then it turns at a slightly different angle till finally we hit this corner. And uh, I think we nailed it. That's looking pretty damn good. Let's go ahead and get the rest of the holes drilled on the back here, get them tapped out and then uh, install the hinge and put it on the vehicle. Here we go. Okay, here we go. We got our glass put on, we got our hinge attached, and I had trouble with these screws. You notice there's some brand new screws in there. That's because when I drilled and tapped those new holes and ran the screws into them, it was for some reason like I was tapping into, you know, loose mud. It's just the tap just was spinning it didn't seem to want to grip i don't understand what the hell was wrong there it just seems like it was too soft of an alloy now i don't know why i didn't have the same problem on the other side but now when i ran this run the screws in uh, the screws like disintegrated <laughs> so combination between bad threads and then just lousy screws i guess they were just compromised anyway i ran in some different screws that were self tappers and those are nice and solid they're not going anywhere in fact i like the way this hinge went together better than the one on the other side so i might wind up taking the uh, screws out of there and running some of these in the, on over there too anyways looking at what we got here everything is nice and straight you see there is a little bit of a gap but it's much smaller than it was on the other side and i think what happened on the other side is the uh, screws are actually a little bit loose and it causes the uh, hinge to move just a little bit in its space, which caused that space to open up. So let's go ahead and throw this thing up here and see what we got. I suspect it's gonna be fine. Helps if I get it in there, right? <laughs> there we go. Looks like I need a wood shim underneath. All right, not bad, not bad at all. Um, the shim is much thicker than what actually is going to be on the bottom there. Let that down a little bit more, pull some more of the shim out, there we go. Now it's got a more proper gap. Now, of course, it's gonna recenter itself when it, uh, it gets pushed in with a seal. So it should center itself great. I don't like the curve there on the lower left. Now that I'm seeing there that that angle that I put in that little hoopty, uh, now it looks like it's, it's too much. And it still looks like it's going up here, which is expected, but down here, which is not supposed to do. So I still might pull the frame apart one more time and then just straighten some of this out. That's not much of a problem. I don't really need, don't really need to stress over it at all. I do see a minor defect in my body work too. Right here, this curve is a little less than perfect. So I'm gonna have to come in on this here and uh, bop, bop, bop with a hammer just a little bit and knock it out of the way because right now it's too tight for a seal to get in there. And that's not hard to do. In fact, I just happened to have the body hammer out because I was using it for forming the, uh, <laughs> forming the frame up that's on there. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, straighten out that little piece of body work first. And then we'll put the rubber seal on this thing, that cruddy old rubber seal, which we're gonna use the cruddy old rubber seal full of cracks. Oh my God, it's gonna go into production on this car. Ah! No, it's not. <laughs> we're just gonna use it just for sizing things up and making sure everything fits right. So far, so good though. I mean, this, this looks great. Let's go ahead and pop this out of here. And uh, where that body work was a little bit tight was right here. If 
fact, I can actually see it now that I'm getting a good look at it. I also see a welding here that I didn't finish. <laughs> that feels and looks much better before there was just it looked like a wart sticking out of there okay oh much better you see the way the window just fell in now it's not hitting anything and now the gap also looks pretty uniform the whole way around yeah that's much better much better that's all it took was a couple wraps with a hammer all right of course I didn't have that problem on the other side but if you remember this car is hand-built. <laughs> all the body panels that were on this car were all either taken from something else or all formed by hand. I don't have an English wheel. Uh, hell, I don't even have a sandbag that you hit with a hammer. I don't have any of that. Everything was just rolled by hand and uh, all formed into place or are original pieces from another vehicle, wherever I could use them, wherever I had something that I could use. So anyway, yep, rubber seal time. I don't think we're gonna show you guys how to do that. I might just spare you. Eh, I'll take the camera in inside. We'll be back in just a second. What the hell just happened? <laughs> Alright, just before I turn the camera on, when I came in here, I had an idea that in my box of rubber seals, and actually I have multiple boxes of just rubber seals for beetle stuff, because I've been collecting this stuff now for almost 30 years, that I might have some uh, pop-out window seals. And to my surprise, yeah, I've got one. This is actually a brand new one. It has been cut, but that's okay because we have to cut them anyway. In addition to that, I found two brand new ones bundled together here, and these feel real nice. I mean, these are nice and soft, just like they should be. There's no telling how long I've had this, actually. There's no manufacturer date on it, but this one has been around a while. This one's a lot stiffer than these other ones are, but you know what? There's no reason why I shouldn't be able to install a brand new seal on that window, so I think that's just what we're gonna do. Let's put this aside. The price tag on those was $10, by the way. I don't know what they cost nowadays, I'll have to look. <laughs> I'll put the price on the bottom of the screen. <laughs> Get that box of seals back on the shelf here where I usually keep it. Here we go. I can't wait until Eleanor is built so that way this room gets emptied out because there is just a ton of crap in this room. And it's getting really, really difficult to move in this area because there's just so many pieces of things just everywhere just everywhere both of her seats are in here there's a few extra pieces of glass i've got a late model carmen gear seat that's in here that i don't even know why i still have it the last time i had a late model carmen gear was almost five years ago <laughs> but all that stuff needs to go i hear more rubber seals in fact there's a uh, oil gauge in here that's a whole bunch of mounting hardware too. That's something to hang on to. And these are a German-made fender welt. I'm gonna keep that for Eleanor because we're gonna need it. In fact, that's probably the Eleanor box. All right, here's our window. Let's verify that indeed, in fact, there are two seals in this bundle. And I'm gonna bet there probably are. Yep, there's two seals tied together. Here we go, big old figure eight. This is nice. These are nice and soft. Really nice and soft. From being rolled up though, they've retained a little bit of a memory. Remember I was complaining about using the old seal that way, that it was going to um, be kind of floppy. You know, not, not straight edged. It was just gonna, just, yeah. So anyway, this might have that problem too, but it's not gonna nearly be as bad because these seals are in much better condition, being that they are new. All right, down here on the window, and I'm not going to demonstrate too much of this. You guys have seen me do it before, and it's a really long, boring process. Probably takes about 30 minutes to run all the way around this thing. But you take, there's a groove in here, you take the seal, which is uh, kind of T-shaped. I'll show you the end of it here. Wherever the hell the extra seal is, where the hell did it go? Well, I don't have it. No, there it is. No, that's not it either. Oh, F it. I, I don't give a shit. It's T-shaped, okay? The top of the T essentially gets pressed into the groove right here. These seals are biased a little bit. They're not perfectly straight. They actually do have a little bit of a curve. 
and that curve should follow your body line. So in that case, the seal should curve out like that. Just like that and around. Well, actually, this is going together real easy already. I see it's starting to squish in the groove. Well, anyway, yeah, there it is. Let's go ahead and uh, get going on here. Being that I am right-handed, I'm going to turn everything around the other way. All right, we see a little tight spot right here, probably from my clamp. All right, and you could do this with a screwdriver. If you're really careful and you don't poke holes in the seal, wow, it's going on a lot easier than the old one did on the other window. But before you do any of that, you need to observe something. And this applies more to the guys with stock windows than anything else. But you see that rubber seam? This is where the seal was manufactured and it was glued together. Usually you want that groove to be right here where the split is in the window. In the case of me with a chop top, I'm going to be cutting that and then I'm going to probably rubber cement it back together. Even crazy glue works on it. And put that back together right there in the groove. But we're gonna start at the top first, approximating where that groove is going to be. Right about there should be fine. Get one side of the T pushed in, and then as I mentioned with a screwdriver or other implement of small destruction, you just kind of poke it in. Another tool that I found that worked quite well is a well, of course, it's not here, but the side of my scraper, I can actually just roll it into place. And I know exactly where there's a scraper sitting at. It's probably the one that was in this room. So I'm going to go grab that real quick. All right. As I said, you just kind of squish the seal in on one side. Then I use a scraper like this, and I just roll it into place, pushing the other side of that seal down into where it needs to be. And this has worked out pretty good for me. I mean, you could try it. Your results may vary. But there's something about that curved edge that just makes this a whole lot easier to just rock it in. And I can just keep working my way around the window. Now, you don't want to stretch this seal because when you get to the end, you'll end up with a whole bunch of slack at the end here just dangling if you uh, <laughs> stretch it out. So just try to let the seal lay in as it wants to without stretching it out. And when you get to the end, it should be easy to tuck it in. Otherwise, you're going to have to make some adjustments. Some people silicone lube these things. I haven't had any need for that. But you know what? I just might try it this time around and see if it makes it any easier. Because now I've got a curiosity. Well, we'll be back as soon as this is done. And I'll let you know. <laughs> All right. We're doing pretty well right here. You notice I brought the black rubber seal just a little bit past the, uh, the seam here. And uh, there's actually a lot of slack in it right now all up through here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece and pull it just again a little bit past that line and continue to tuck it in. And then I'll pull some slack into this here and get these two pieces um, butted together, pull a slack out of it so that way they're mushing into each other uh, with a little bit of crazy glue in between. And that will close them up. And that'll be real nice. I don't want to close it yet, though, because I have to open this thing up to put real glass in it. Yeah, this plexi is not going into production. So the glue won't go on it yet, but... We're still going to get the seal on it anyway. Well, we're going to finish tucking this in. We'll be back in just a minute. All right, there we go. That worked out quite well. The seal is uh, beautifully seated. It's got just a little bit of slack in it. As it's going to shrink, I anticipate that. What we used to uh, lubricate it was just a little bit of Wendix. <laughs> Blue lube. Sprayed that all the way around, and it dried up nice and quickly. Unlike silicone, which would have got all over your fingers, and this would have been a, just a, a gooey mess. That worked out quite well, because you know it's a little bit slick when you put it on, and it dries up kind of quick. So that worked out really, really nicely. I do see some mold spots on these seals from having sat for so long. I'll clean them up real nice. That's typical of rubber when it sits around for a while. It starts to get these moldy-looking spots on it had the same problem happen to, to new cars. But anyway, that should clean up. Let's go ahead and get outside and uh, shove this on the car and see what she looks like. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's see if this window is going to fit into there. And I think everything will be just fine, but who knows. <laughs> now this hinge has to be squished into the pillar with a lot of force because the rubber seal is going to be trying to deflect it in the opposite direction. So you have to kind of roll it in. There it is. 
and I'll just kind of push it in where it needs to go. Well, okay, it's in. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that sucker went right in. I thought it was going to need a little more force than that. That seal seals perfectly around those edges. That is just perfect. The other side was not near as perfect, not nearly as perfect at all. Wow. Okay. I guess what we're ready to do now is go on on the inside and drill out the, uh, the holes for the hinges and get the screws put in it. And then we're done. At least done enough until we jump into the electric motors anyway, which I'm going to be adjusting and uh, finalizing in the next video. So stick around for that. All right, looking down inside of here, you'll see these five holes that are running through here. This is the ones that go onto the lip. And what I need to do is I need to get a screwdriver or something and push these in as tight as you can get them before you drill those holes. And there's really not a whole lot of motion on it because the way I got this window wedged into place, it, uh, it's fitting pretty tight right now. All right, let's go ahead and grab my cordless drill. For some stupid reason, I got in the car and didn't bring it with me. <laughs> but it's best to drill these holes while the hinge is in place because the hinge will actually be a template as to where the holes are going to be. So don't mark them, take it apart, and put it back together. That, that's nonsense. Yep, leave them right in place the way they are. And even if you have two men doing this, you can have somebody on the outside pushing it into place, helping to do that. But because I have new seals and everything wedged in there tight, uh, I think it's going to be good. All right, here goes. Push it in. Start with our pilot hole. And that drill bit sucks. Or does it? No, it's working, never mind. I just didn't see it throwing any, any shade in. Jump to the next one. Helps if I turn the drill the right way, right? Top two. All right, last one. Whoa. That's what we call a broken drill bit. It helps if you drill in straight, which I didn't do. <laughs> and these little tiny drill bits, I have a bad tendency to break off all the time anyway, because I'm just too rough. All right, try again. Oops, helps if it's in the chuck straight, which it's not. Now it's in the chuck straight. All right, now we can drill our final holes. I'm gonna go back in the house and get the right pack of screws. These were the wrong ones. Back in a minute. All right, hopefully you guys can get a good look at this. Well, this little metal piece is the backer 
and you notice the holes are more biased to one side than the other. I like to put the skinny side in first because these things only go in just so deep. And I try to get the very first hole aligned. Sometimes it's the first one on the top will align better, sometimes it's the one on the bottom. Make sure that you have a screw. And make sure that it goes into the holes that you've just made. It's actually a little more snug than I wanted it to be. <laughs> it's actually threading into my hole. Wonder if it'll tighten down. No, it won't. It's probably just that the hinge, yeah, that's exactly what it is. The hinge sprung back because these are just spring steel. Pull the screw back just enough. All right, once again, holes. The skinny side biased inwards, so I'll turn that around and see if we can get the first one in this way. This can be a real prick. But once you've got that first one, they get easier after that. thread into that hole. There it goes. Or did it? Nope, it didn't. Oh. A little something here. It's a little piece of sheet metal. Try and pry it into position. All right, it caught the hole, but the problem was is the metal was falling in. Once you get it started, the thread don't tighten it all the way because you're going to have to play with it a little bit to make sure that everything else lines up. I try to go through the middle here. I'm going to move this camera out of the way because once again, I'm hitting it and it's pissing me off. <laughs> I'm threading in. I can't tell. Feels like I just bottomed out. Oh, there it is. All right, as I said with the other one, leave it just a little bit loose. Probably could have served to have drilled those holes a little bit bigger, but oddly I used the same bit on the other side and they weren't so damn snug. But the top one, I can already see the alignment's a little bit off. All right, there's the rear quarter window, hinges and everything installed. Opens up on that hinge just fine. And you notice there's no up and down on it, or at least very, very minimum, because the hinge is nice and stiff. Now I have to work on the uh, power motor back here to make sure that it pulls that window into place so 
all the seals go tight. It doesn't need to go anything beyond that because you can actually pull that sucker in way tight on there and uh, <laughs> pull it into the point that the seals are going to get jammed. But I don't see that as being necessary. Right about there seems to be good. Yeah, looking like it's seal all the way around the edges here. Still need to do a little grinding here. But the seal is riding up on that lip a little bit. But right there looks to be pretty good. So anyways, I think I'm quite happy with this one. So here we go. <laughs> if that doesn't say it all, I don't know what does. <laughs> so anyway, I think that's going to sum it up. Uh, that's how I make a pop out from start to finish, all in one video. <laughs> so you guys, if you enjoyed that, please give me a licky likey, thumbs up as always, comment, subscribe, pluck that dingle belly that way you get updates every time I upload a new video. And don't forget to check out my website, duckshit.net. Up there on duckshit.net, you will find all of my different social media links and everything else that I'm currently working on. If I take a picture of something, you might see it on my Instagram, you might see it over on Facebook. You won't necessarily see it on YouTube. So if I have a day off from working on videos, you might see me working on something else someplace else. So check out my other social media links. Make sure you comment, follow, subscribe, you know, all those other fun things that they call it in those other places. Thanks for watching, guys. Really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.